what time is it? It's end of month. End of May here. So we're going to recap April numbers as we sit here at the end of May yep. 2023. Yep. And we're going to compare a little bit to what? Well, the previous months. I, I, the, the one statistic that stuck out to me in uh, January, February was the uh, the 12 single family homes is all that sold out on Longboat Key. So I thought that was interesting, um, especially when you consider we, you know, in last month we sold one ourselves. Right. We have another one that's closing at the end of, well, 23rd of June. So, I mean, that's that's pretty good when you consider that like only 12 closed in, in all of January and February. They're, they're averaging about six a month and we're, we've got one in exactly. each of the months. So that's pretty, pretty solid. And we're gonna do a little bit of comparison with our recent trip to Monaco, which we did a whole video on Monaco. So please stay tuned. All right, so this time let's look nationally and globally because again, we just got back from All right, from Monaco for our global trip. So um, yeah, I mean, I think those numbers are always interesting, but uh, you know, we always think of Sarasota as being you know, pretty high end. I mean, you, you, in terms of Florida, your Palm Beach and Miami are obviously the highest, Naples, and then we're just under Naples. My guess is, is that, that Sarasota is probably somewhere between 350 and 425 per square yeah. foot. And that's, that's the islands and the mainland, so it's all encompassing. Yeah, all of it. Average. Uh, so let, let's, let's take the high end number and say Go. it's 425 a square foot. Uh, Monaco's average price per square foot is fifteen thousand six hundred and fifty dollars a square foot. Wait, fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand, and and it goes up to. And we looked at several properties. Um, there's a set of villas that we we looked at. There's a penthouse unit that we saw uh, that were thirty five thousand a square foot. So quite literally a hundred times more expensive per square foot than Sarasota County is. So you know it's interesting. We always think of us, uh, you know, you. Know, Americans in general tend to think that like the whole world is encompassed by revolves America. Around us. Yeah, it all revolves it around us. It doesn't. Uh, and it doesn't. And so, you know, when you, you get overseas and you go to some of these places, um, you know, Monaco obviously is one of the most expensive places in the world. I, I think Dubai, Monaco are probably the two where you're going to see really eye popping numbers like that. Um, but to see 15,650 a square foot and then see it go all the way up to 35,000 a square foot. Um, it was really, really interesting. I, I think probably the most shocking thing that I, I saw there, um, you know, I, a week before us leaving, I saw a video of Ryan Serhan doing a, a penthouse in New York City that was the most expensive penthouse in, in the United States or most expensive house in the United States right now for 250 million. Uh, in Monaco, they built a, um, a stretch of land where they, they filled it in the way they did in Dubai. And there's eight uh, villas that they're building right now that are $500 million each, each, each. We walked each. past it. It was funny because we kind of got like a little lost or something. We were trying to figure our way back to uh, where we were headed to our appointment. And we were walking down the tunnel area, actually where the F1 races exactly are. And we happened to see where it was. We, yeah, right? so we looked out right, we where, a picture right where they're kind of filling yeah. it in and yeah. building it out, but it's really stunning. I mean, again, those, those numbers Incredible. are just eye popping. Um, the, uh, the the penthouse unit that Prokhorov, um, who, who used to own one of the, the uh, soccer clubs, football clubs, um, in, in England, he has a penthouse unit that I, it sounds to me like Monaco took the unit from him well, uh, as part of the, his, his affiliation <laughs> with, with uh, Putin, but uh, they have that for sale right now for 290 million. So even just in that tiny little one and a quarter, um, by one, by one and a quarter miles, it's it's a very very small space. Um, I mean, some of the units are just just so so high. Right. So you know, we again we, we th tend to think of like, well, gosh, you know, you you get out onto Lido and some of the condos that are the new construction condos that are being built are up in the twenty five hundred, even even close to three thousand dollars a square foot. It seems exceptionally high uh, for Sarasota, but when you look at it compare it to some of the global places, it's really not as high as you think. Yeah, so. and then I saw the most expensive property that Jay-Z and Beyonce bought for $200 million in Malibu, I saw right. about that, so I thought that was interesting. I mean, I feel like Palm Beach is kind of headed to that direction because there's an island I saw on Instagram that they have for sale. It's in the $200 million range. range. Yeah. Um, so I think that's probably the next place to pop outside of Miami. I mean, we're already seeing a hundred million here and there in, in Palm Beach. 
and things like that. We haven't seen quite those numbers here. But I, I think but... That, that what's interesting to me there is that even in the smaller properties, the price per square foot plays out. And what I mean by that is a thousand square foot property runs right about 15.5 million. So like here, you know, we think about $15.5 million, you're definitely on Massive. the beach. It's gonna be a huge house on the beach, all the amenities, lots of square footage. It's a thousand square foot condo that may or may not have a view of the water at 15, 15.6 uh, million. So yeah, it's nice to get perspective to like get outside of your sandbox to see how the other side of the world lives and really compare. And again, we did a, uh, a detailed video while we were there, so please stay tuned and watch the Monaco visit just to recap some of our appointments that we had there and show you a little bit of Monaco. Yep. Um, but most notably, the cities for U.S. migration are Miami, of course, of course. Austin, is, Texas, is, is okay. a big is a big one, Greenwich, and Scottsdale. It's interesting. Yeah. I mean, you you think of Austin as pulling a lot of the entertainment people from L.A. or moving out there. Um, I, I understand that Scottsdale's a little bit surprising. I, guess, I mean, is that near I, Phoenix? It's near Phoenix, and, and my guess is, is that again they're probably pulling people out of LA because the pricing is a lot cheaper than it is in right. California. Well, and Greenwich though, and that's, Greenwich. that's an interesting. I guess they're probably always going to have the people coming and going from New York. Yeah, I would think so. Right? And yeah. We've had several people come. We have a lot of people from Connecticut buy second homes here, third, fourth homes, whatever. Sure. Um, you know, and they don't they don't always say Greenwich, even no. if they do, because of course when you say Greenwich, you think high dollar. Of course, high dollar real estate. Yeah, but like one of my clients that that uh, just sold their place and bought a place out east, they're they're from Connecticut, but really, you know, they're an hour, hour and twenty minutes outside of New York City. So, it's that whole area is is really people just commuting into the city and working. Uh, so. Well, and now to our point of our trip and everything, we we looked at the stats from the institute, which I like to look at as a more national perspective and global as well. That talks about uh, you know the luxury markets around yep. the country and around the world. The strong U.S. dollar now the dollar is kind of it's been weakening over the right? last month or so. It's been Didn't coming it get down. Stronger a little bit over the last couple of days though. Um, thought... well, it, over the last three weeks it's sort of come down. Right. I, we it, it came way down, started to climb back up, and now it's come all the way back down okay. again. So it's kind of all over the map right now, but it's very low. I mean, it, the good thing is, is that so is the euro. Right. So like in comparison, you know, um, it, the euro has come down quite a bit too. So it's that it's not hurting us too much. Well, in the article, it said the strong U.S. dollar has enabled wealthier Americans to head abroad to seek a second home in other countries like Dubai, Monaco, Monaco. Malaysia, or yep. the Hawaiian Islands as well. And what is still in demand is move-in ready, luxury, well-appointed yep. furniture, furnishings and staging matter, of course price matters, in places that are uber wealthy, maybe not as much on the pricing, I don't right. know. But, but I, I, I think by and large right now, <clears throat> you know, everybody talks about, well, the market has slowed down, it's slowed down. Well, it has, um, but what hasn't slowed down and what is still very aggressive are you know, brand new homes, of course, and the houses that are completely updated and renovated and yeah, move-in ready. Always. If, if your place is updated and renovated and it's move-in ready, you generally are going to get a really large premium because the reality is, is that even if it's not in a great location on the water, people don't want to do the renovations right now. Right. They don't want to deal with the contractors. They don't want their place, the place that they're living in, even if it's part time, to be a construction zone for month after month. Yep. So right now, those properties that are, are well appointed and well done, they're they're still moving quickly. So to that point, we're going to move along and talk local stats. All right, bringing it back to more local stats and examples to your point about what you're talking about. So April for me, because we have some business that's not together. He has his business and I have some of my business and then we have team business. Um, April for me in particular is really strangely slow, which normally is like gangbusters. And now May and heading into June has been super busy, writing contracts, closing transactions for our clients. Um, and so to that point, when we were in April, some of our sellers, my sellers in particular, were asking like, why is it so slow? Right. Why don't we have any showings or why don't we have more showings? And I did say, I did say over and over again, like as we head into summer, it's going to slow have, down. Have to be a little bit patient yep. because we're going to have less showings, but you know what? They are always 
better quality. Like, would you rather have a ton of people through and never write an offer? No. Or no, just it, the one person and it's like, boom. Agreed. And, and yeah. it seems to me like right now things have slowed down, but but they are exactly what you said. Yeah. They're the people that are coming are serious buyers that are well qualified and they're ready to buy. You know, I, I think that both sides, buyers and sellers, play this game of <laughs> well, in summer everything's going to slow down. No. So and and it's I don't. True. It's just not necessarily true. I mean, you're yeah, you may not show it as many times, but we're still moving properties. We have a closing on the twenty third. Mm -hmm. um, I just closed two properties last month. Yeah, um, one one on Longboat, one out east. I mean, we're busy. We're we're extremely busy. Yeah. So um, I I think that. You know, like you said, it's a little bit higher quality buyer. You know, right. you're not having a lot of people that are just in the beginning stages of looking. People are generally ready to buy at this point. We have one closing today in the seven figures. We're really excited about awesome. in the west of the trail area, so that's fun. Yep. We also, to that exact point, trying to tell our sellers to be patient. Well, I had another one that really needed work. It took longer to sell. Right. Some of the ones updated exactly fits in with what we're talking about, and she got she got a good price. Now it's Pending, so we have to wait for inspections and everything like that. But it's exactly the point that we're trying to make, and it was it was mentioned in the luxury blog that we that we pulled up. Even the most appealing properties that are fairly priced may still sit on the market for some time before the right buyer comes along. And rather than taking drastic measures such as reducing the price, understand that it may, it may make sense to ride it out in certain cases. Sure. Um, I do have a couple of properties that I think in, the, in this case, it does make sense to wait a little instead of chasing everybody else's pricing down. It really highly depends on the property, having open conversation and dialogue with your clients, and you know, making sure you're communicating that 100%. information and the stats. And well, what's right for them and what, when to wait and when to pull the trigger. Well, I, I mean, I always caution myself, too, whenever I'm talking about a reduction that, you know, if they start pulling the rates back down, our market's going to come racing all the way back. And if you, if you drop the price, then sure, it's going to sell really quickly mm -hmm. as you drop the price and the market comes back. But I, I think that everybody is still a little bit cautiously watching these, these interest rates. Now, look, generally speaking, once you go over a million dollars, most of those deals are not financed anyway, right. so it doesn't really affect that market as much. But I think the people that um, are all cash generally are taking that cash out of the market or mm -hmm. out of some other type of investment. So if the market is coming down, yeah, they're a little bit cautious of, well, geez, I'm, you know, if the market comes racing back and I, I pulled all this it's money out and put it in the house. Hopefully. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, our, our hope is, is that when they pull the interest rates down, the market and, and I say the stock market by itself, as well as the housing market will come racing back. I agree. I, I think that, that awesome. um, we're, we're gonna at a good time. Now is a great time to invest. I, I think that um, we've been targeting kind of that Ritz project and, and a couple of others here in town. Price per square foot, I think there's a ton of upside there if you, if you can get in pre-construction. Um, so I, yeah, I mean, there's, there's still deals to be had. There's opportunity and for those, uh, you know, on the fence about wanting to sell or not, it's just, it's, it's going to be a good time, whether it's the summer or not. I've never believed in the summer slowdown. I mean, traffic wise is certainly slower, but transactionally speaking, we're busy throughout the year. Um, and so to that point, we've got more inventory. We do. Right, for the yeah. team. Well, we've got more inventory and we, we have a lot coming up. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, we've gotten uh, a listing variety. down in Port Charlotte. We have, um, yeah, I still have my listing over on, on Cedar Oak, but I'm actually getting a lot of activity on that now. Um, we, of course, we sold the two on, on uh, Longboat Key, but we are we still have a couple that we, we think will be coming up here fairly shortly as well. So we're busy. And we're one busy. kind of in this area, stay tuned, stay right? Stay tuned, yep. Now, interestingly enough, despite our having success and our, you know, we work really hard actions every single day yep. and we're out there boots on the ground, there are agents leaving the business. I did read that in Miami, they're down 36% in terms of the realtor numbers, which what are your thoughts on that? I think that, I mean, look, there's <laughs> the, the statistic everybody knows in, in real estate is that 85% of realtors never sell a single property or out of the business in the first year. I think that, you know, look, there are a lot of people that jump into this thinking, oh, it's easy money. You know, I'm, I mean, I've got all these connections. I grew up in Sarasota. I grew up in Miami. And, and so really I really matter. And it doesn't matter. And, and, and I'll tell you, you know, generally speaking, especially when you go up in the higher price points, people are not not going to turn over their five million or more property to a brand new agent. Even if it's their kid or their you know, their family member, a friend that they've known for years, they, they want to be properly represented. So. I think that, you know, 
a lot of the people get into it for the wrong reasons, thinking, well, I'm gonna come in here and work 10 hours a week and I'm gonna make millions and millions of dollars every single year because that's what they see on TV. And that's not the reality of the business. It just isn't the reality. The reality is, is that it's a lot of hours, especially when you're brand new, and you're either willing to do those hours or you're not. And if you're not, um, the system is sort of set up in a way that you're you're going to be checks for the checks and balances. You're you're going to be pushed out pretty quickly um, if you're not putting the hours in and putting the work in. So, um, you know, as you get more established, obviously, you know, you've been around 21 years. You're going to have naturally you know, referrals, and you're going to have people that you've done business with in the past that are going to refer business into you. Whereas when you're brand new. You know, even people that know you are not going to refer to you until they see you transacting right. a lot of property and right. see that you're being becoming successful. So, I think that um, you know a lot of these people need to be washed out. It takes a while to build a name and a brand yep. and uh, trust, you know, trust in the public. Yep. But to that point, I mean, with with people leaving the business, we are growing the team. So we are. We're very excited. We're actually not recruiting. We're getting people that are seeing us and what we're doing and. I feel like I'm excited to be a mentor for some people sure. and like they're seeking us out, which is an awesome feeling. Yeah. I feel like it's for me being doing this for so long to be able to give back in that way and you know, of course make money along the way. So sure. we're, we're generally really excited about that. Um, what else? So we can speak to just, we'll end it here with some, just some numbers for you. So the end of April, Again, we like to compare single family homes, Sarasota County, we're not talking about condos, townhomes, villas, we're just talking single family homes because yep. they're the better gauge of the marketplace, right? So April, 2022 had 792 homes closed versus this past April for 747. So it's down about almost 6%. Okay. What do you equate that to necessarily? What is what are your thoughts? I think I think that I mean, that's a, still kind of a small number. I would mm -hmm. think that people are, are cautious right now. They want to see that the market's going to turn around. They want to see that the the interest rates are going to come down a bit. I don't think that they're going to come back down to two percent or two and a half percent they were. I, I think that we'll, you'll see reduction and they'll eventually come down to four four and a half, which is probably is about average. I, I think they I think they will. Yeah, I, I mean, hope so. I, but I don't, they're definitely not going back to what they were. You're not going to see, the, you know, the, the Fed bring it down to zero and then, you know, rates coming out at two and a half or three percent. That's not going to happen again. Yeah. And so, these people, like the inventory matters too. So the people like, again, we've talked about this before in other end of market stats videos that, okay, if a seller has two or three percent, are they going to be inclined to move if they really don't have to upgrade right. or downsize? and get less house for more mm -hmm. monthly payment, they're probably not. Right. But again, but but then, okay, on the flip side, like all of my transactions right now that are pending are cash. Right. Just so, right. like, so that's what's so interesting about our specific market that's not, you can't look to like the national stats. Right. Um, median prices are up, okay, year over year by 7.7%, .7%, while the average is down. So this is where there's like a little play on stats here. The median price is up, average is down by 9.1%. But our average price here is, if you were to guess, what would it be? <laughs> In Sarasota, single family homes? I'm gonna say see how good you are. 475 grand. <laughs> 651. Whoa, wow, that's really that's high. That's average. That's really high. Average. Okay, yeah. let's now compare to the asking price versus selling price. Now, this time last year, 2022. It was over. It was probably over. 100.8. Yeah. Which my, is silly. My guess is it's probably around 90%. 95.7. Oh, okay. 95.7. So you're still getting pretty close to ask then. Yeah. So then, last but not least, there's two things. Listings are down quite a bit. Um, this time last year, 2022, and ended in April, we had 1,104 homes, and now we have 845, which I was feeling. I felt that. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely felt April was a strange vortexy month, but you had a good April. I did have a good April, but I, I think something that's interesting to me is that if you go back a year, year and a half, two years ago especially, you know, anything that was renovated or was in good shape was Done. selling oh. in one day, way over one asking. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, for outrageous prices, 
you know, I, I saw two properties that were listed in Bay Isles that were probably the best houses I've seen in a long time. You know, I know that, the ones. That started at, at $3.4 million and were totally renovated top to Gorgeous. bottom. Gorgeous. Absolutely spectacular inside. Inside Bay Isles. Great community. Guard gated, private beach across the street, you know, near they the- sat. They sat. They sat there and they dropped the price and dropped the price. They finally sold- Under but, three million. But they sold under three million in Bay Isles completely renovated, which is really stunning to me. Well, they were also, I think, because one was not on the water, one was. So Correct. one, I think they were really shooting for the stars. And again, sellers that are not realistic. Now, when we price a listing, it's not always the price that we would recommend. No. It's not no. always our price. We have a, we have, you know, we have a, a relationship with the seller. We have to talk about it. So, what we recommend may not always be reflective of the listing price. Not, no, but, I, you know, look, if you list it too high, it is not going to sell. You know, if it, I would say, if you go back a year and a half or two years ago, you could list things a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand, maybe two hundred grand too high. They were still going to sell. It wasn't going to be a problem. Now, if you're high. Not only are they not going to sell, but a lot of people just aren't even going to come look at it. They're them. not going to come. Yeah. And if they do <coughs> make an offer, it's going to be very, very far off the asking price. But sure. buyers are not inclined to do that because they don't want to insult the seller. Right. Um, I do have one coming up soon. You know, you have to look for it. They did have quite a bit off. I want. I want to guess maybe 80, 87 percent of the asking price, which is a far amount. That's, that's off a lot. Of the asking price. It's a lot when you're talking seven figure pro properties. Yeah. That's so a lot. last but not least, April had two point nine months of inventory i feel like may we're going to see an increase don't you probably may june july august you'll probably see an increase and in september it'll come down again right. you know it'll, it'll start getting really busy um you know things always slow down here you know june july august although last year you had a really big busy august right but i i think that some of that also is timing that you know you get the deal gets together in june or july and then it eventually closes in august so I, you know, I, I think that, um, I think we need, we need inventory because we have these buyers that saw our other properties that missed the boat. Right. Right. We've had a lot of open houses. Yep. We have people on our list, our buyers list, but we're actually looking for inventory now. So we really, if you are on the fence about selling, definitely worth having a conversation with us. Um, we are happy to provide an actual reality of your equity position, meaning where would we What's the actual equity? Where should we list it and how much off of that? I'll give you a quick example. I was doing some comps for a potential listing um, on one of the islands and I went to Zillow, I went to Realist, I went to Redfin and I went to one more. There was a fourth one, I can't remember. And all of the numbers were, they were kind of close. One was really skewed, but they were all over the place. And so as a consumer, you're how like, do you know? how do you know if I'm leaving money on the table or if I'm going to be priced so high that so high nothing's going to come in? Nobody's going to come. Right. So again, that's where I went. I said, listen, I need to get in to see this property. There's only so much I can do from photos. I right. can get really close, but nothing beats me walking through the property, right. which I did. And I was able to narrow down the price. And I feel like it is the price where they would get multiple offers maybe right right or at least get people in the door we're not really yeah. a multiple offer market no. anymore but like no. to get it to sell in a reasonable amount of time which is okay three month inventory what that's still a seller's market that's still a seller's market yeah yeah so you want people to call you or yeah i mean that, at the end of the day that's it i mean and look we we will take listings that are a little bit higher but there comes a point for me where i say you know look I'm not in the business of taking listings that are 10, 15, 10, 15, 20% higher. At the end of the day, I'm paying for the photos and the marketing and the online advertising. And I'm not gonna do that if we're so high that people aren't gonna even come in and look at the property. There's just no point in that. Right. So, you know, I, I think that there has to be a kind of a, a you know, understanding of uh, what the market is and, and what the pricing is. And, you know, sometimes I'll take something a little bit high with an automatic reduction built into it. Sure. And, and we'll try the higher number, and if not, then at least we're reducing it down fairly quickly. Uh, but yeah, I, I, what we're gonna see here in the next month, I think will be interesting. I do think things, things are gonna slow down. June, July, and August are gonna be slow. Uh, and then September, it'll come racing back, especially if they pull down the interest rate. So Time will tell, it yeah. always does. Yep. So you can be reached at? Uh, on my cell, uh, 24 hours a day at 941-586-2460. Yep, and I can be reached as well on my cell, 941. 
844-764-7690. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't, please subscribe, like, and comment. We respond to all of the comments and we really appreciate you coming back to the channel yep. and his channel as well. Um, and, or click the link below, shaylatwit.com.